The Blue Bloods are here to bring you guys a very special episode pertaining to the upcoming NFL Draft. We've run you guys through the entire first round of the NFL Draft and give you guys our prediction for the first round and analyze each potential pick throughout these first 32 picks. We got a loaded, exciting episode today for you guys, so let's kick it off. A little bit of a different episode, you know, we bring you guys four debate topics usually every episode but we figured why not take the mock draft and bring it to a special episode for you guys so we're gonna just like i said walk you guys through these picks but brandon i'm gonna make you be the Bengals first i i, I don't think this is gonna be a debate honestly but who do you think the Bengals are gonna take with the first pick of the draft yeah i think you give me one of the easier picks here uh <laughs> one of the least controversial picks at least anyway um I'm going to have to go with Joe Burrow. I think that's a no-brainer. The The Bengals basically have that one all wrapped up. Uh, what else can you really say? You know, I, do you know is, is Chase Young a better player? That's up for debate. But the Bengals are going with Joe Burrow, first pick overall tomorrow. Yeah, and you guys, we're recording yeah, this. Today. Yeah, yeah, today. But we're recording this on Wednesday, and a report already came out that the Bengals have informed Burrow and his family as representatives that – he will be the first pick in the NFL draft this year. And this comes as no surprise. The hometown kid, the number one quarterback in the draft, supposedly, uh, as some of us think. But, I mean, I, I don't know about you, Brandon. I kind of said the Bengals were forced their hand into this because I think everybody who has a job in Cincinnati would lose it if they drafted anyone other than Joe Burrow here. Well, yeah, and, and, you know, it's one of those situations where the Bengals need a quarterback. You know, they, they're pretty much done with Andy Dalton. So, you know, if, if you pick another quarterback, I know you're super high on Justin Herbert, um, but Joe Burrow is the best quarterback in this draft. And so that's, you know, that's what they're going to get. So For sure. And, you know, guys, we're predicting this first round, no trades predicted, but, I'm, but we're going to give you possible picks that could be traded. Brett, we're going to do the snake draft style because y'all love it. Uh, I'm going to take the Redskins pick first, and I think this is a pick that can potentially be traded. Uh, the Redskins, you know, got Dwayne Haskins last year. Are they really in the, you know, how high are they on Chase Young would depend, but I think Miami and the, you know, the Chargers could really trade up to this pick to try to get a quarterback if they're really, really desperate. Um, but if if not, I think the Redskins have to go with Chase Young. They have holes all over this roster. And I think at this point for the Redskins, you just go with the best overall available player. And for most people, it's almost a consensus that Chase Young is the move here. Right. Yeah. And that's also my number two. Um, I've got Chase Young going to the Redskins. That one's also kind of a no brainer for me. Uh, like you said, the Redskins do have holes all over the roster. I mean, geez, I mean, where, where can you start? They need a new quarterback. Dwayne Haskins isn't going to cut it. Um, as a matter of fact, there are talks that other quarterbacks are already beating him out. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, it, you know, we don't really know what's going to go on with the Redskins, but I mean, their hand is really forced to take chase young right here. You know, they do need a, an edge rusher. They need a defensive end and chase Young's going to fill that gap perfectly. Um, so let's go ahead and continue on unless you had another thought it's kind of sound like you had something to say, uh, <laughs> but let's go ahead and move on to the lions. Um, another team who kind of ha kind of has holes, in a lot of places, you know, they could use a defensive lineman, offensive lineman. Uh, where's who's their running back? Who knows? Um, wide receivers up in the air. But really what they need is a cornerback. They need a defensive back. And so that's why I'm going with my third pick. I'm going to go with Jeff Okuda um, going to the Lions uh, out of Ohio State. I think he would be a pretty good fit here in Detroit and he could really help to beef this defense up just a little bit. Yeah. And, you know, for a, for a minute here. I think a lot of experts thought this pick could could be traded. I did too, but after the Darius Slay fallout and you know where Matt Patricia and Slay had a falling out and they had to trade him, it leaves a giant hole in their secondary. And the Lions need that number one cornerback to really lean on. Uh, Patricia is a defensive guy. I think Okuda is the obvious pick here, and. You know, I don't think anybody in the world is rooting for the Redskins to trade that second pick more than Matt Patricia because he would love to get his hands on Chase Young. But for right now, I think I'm going to have to stick with Akuda here from Ohio State. And for me, I think he's probably the second best defensive player in this draft. Yeah, for sure. And you know what? We already got lost in the snake. So, Zach, I'm going to let you pick number four as well. Um, I don't really know <laughs> what's going on anymore. 
let's do it. Um, I'm I, so I was really torn here. The Giants' two biggest needs are offensive line and linebacker. Um, and you know they easily could reach for an offensive lineman here. I'm looking at someone like Tristan Wirfs, Andrew Thomas out of Georgia, but. I'm going to stick with my gut here. I think they're going to go with the next best overall player, and that's Isaiah Simmons. I think the Giants are set at you know quarterback with Daniel Jones. They got their running back in Saquon. Their wide receivers are coming along. The only reason I can see them straying away from Simmons is they already have Jabril Peppers, which kind of plays a similar hybrid role compared to Simmons. But I think Simmons is too good of an athlete to pass on. And I think they're thinking long term and you match up Simmons with DeAndre Baker and Jabril Preppers and you have probably one of the best secondaries in the league. And so I think the Giants make the safe pick here and actually take Isaiah Simmons out of Clemson. Yeah, Zach, um, I actually have the same pick here. I'm starting to feel like we're cheating off each other, but, you know, I'll be honest. You know, full transparency to everybody. Zach and I didn't even talk about the draft beforehand. We just kind of said, hey, we're done with our drafts. Now what? So we started recording. Uh, I've also got Isaiah Simmons here, number four, going to the Giants. Um, like you said, you know, they, they this Giants team also has a lot of holes. And if they don't take Simmons, uh, which I have Simmons, I have Simmons on my list. But if they don't take Simmons, yeah, they're going to take an O-lineman. Uh, they have to have somebody, you know, they're set. They're set. They're going to take Daniel Jones, I guess. That's who they're That's who they're going to trust their uh, play calling with. Um, and so Daniel Jones is going to be their quarterback for the long run, it looks like, for right now at least. And they need an O-line to protect him. But, you know, this defense is, uh, you know, that they, they, need, they need more backup. And so I think that Isaiah Simmons is the player to uh, give that to them. Yeah, I'd completely agree. And, um, you know, uh, this next pick is going to make me a little nauseous here. Because I think this is where the mock draft really starts getting interesting, where me and Brandon are going to just start disagreeing a lot. Um, and, you know, I re- released my initial mock draft. I had the Dolphins picking a quarterback here. But based on the reports that were released today, which on Wednesday, is that the Dolphins are actually going to try to get a tackle or an offensive lineman with their first pick. And for some you know, it's because they're the Dolphins and they're one of the worst franchises in the league. They're trying to trade up for an offensive lineman, Brandon, even though none of the first four teams want an offensive lineman outside of maybe the Giants. But I changed my pick here. I think I'm going to have the Dolphins taking tw- Tristan Worse out of Iowa at, uh, at offensive tackle. I think Worse has the highest upside of any offensive lineman in this draft. He dominated the combine. He played on a decent team at Iowa, and I think the Dolphins are going to want to protect you know, a quarterback that they get down the line. I hope that's not Ryan Fitzpatrick or Josh Rosen, but the Dolphins have three first-round picks, so I think quarterback might come later, but for right here, I'm going to stick with worse going to the Dolphins at five. You know what? And I don't actually hate that pick uh, for the Dolphins. You know, I, There are some quarterbacks, at least in my draft, that I have falling a little bit, and I think the Dolphins can still get a quality pick later on. Um, as far as this pick is concerned, you know, I didn't see that report. And so I didn't know that they were going to go with an alignment. So on my mock draft, I have Miami taking Justin Herbert. Uh, and that may come as a surprise to some of you. Uh, you know, you've heard you've heard me talk about the quarterbacks in this draft and who I think are, you know, the best quarterbacks, so forth. Um, and as much as I hate to disagree with as much as I love to disagree with Zach, I can't help but think that this Wonder Lake test kind of pushed this move. Uh and that that's the case for whoever takes Justin Herbert, you know, whether it's the Dolphins, whether it's whoever else. Um, I think that Justin Herbert is going to be taken over Tua at this point, just because, you know, Tua had that 13 or 19 or whatever it was. Um, and this pair with his injury history is going to push a team to take Justin Herbert pick, uh, higher. And so I've got Miami taking him with the fifth overall pick. And I'm going to go ahead and move on to the Chargers with the sixth pick. And I have the Chargers going after a quarterback as well. I've got them going for Tua. Um, obviously the chargers are in dire need of quarterback, Phillip rivers gone. He's with Indy, he's with Indianapolis now. And so, um, the chargers are left with who I, I couldn't name their backup quarterback. And so, well, I'm sorry. That's uh, what's his name? Uh, shoot. Is that Tyrod who is it? Bail me out here. Tyrod Taylor. I knew that. Um, anyway, they've got Tyrod Taylor. They, they are going to need somebody else to step into this role. Um, I think two is a pretty good fit in, in LA really. Uh, you know, he's got a lot of talent around him there. And so uh, that's really all my reasoning. <laughs> yeah, I've got the, I've got the top two quarterbacks off the board. Now let's go with Tua. Yeah. So 
Uh, I'm also going quarterback hit the Chargers, but it might not be the quarterback you guys are thinking. I'm going like, I mean, because Justin Herbert is still on the board here, I'm still going to go with two attack of Aloha here for the Chargers. I think the Chargers like two of more than they're letting on. I think they, I think Tua needs to go to a place that can keep him healthy, that has talent, has an offensive line. And I think Tua's style fits the Chargers offense better. And I think the fact that the Chargers know they have Tyrod Taylor and they can sit Tua, let him learn, let him get healthy, you know, make sure he's perfectly in shape before they roll their, you know, future franchise quarterback out on the field. I think that's going to make Tua Tagovailoa a better option for the Chargers. Do I personally think Tua is better than Justin Herbert? I do not. But I think the Chargers need a spark to their franchise. We've seen the crowds that show up to watch the Chargers play. And that spark is Tua Tagovailoa. And it, Tua will sell tickets. It will change the face of the franchise. And I think everything's pointing, for me at least, that the Chargers are going to go with Tua over Herbert. And yeah. yeah. For pick seven, I think this is another chalk pick in the top ten. There's a few of these, and I think the Panthers are going Derek Brown, Auburn, defensive tackle. The biggest need for the Panthers is defensive tackle, and Derek Brown is the best defensive lineman, interior defensive lineman in the draft, and probably the number two defensive lineman total behind Chase Young. And the Panthers are going to put him in the inside over 300 pounds. He's going to take multiple, multiple offensive linemen to stop him. And I think he's going to be a French, uh, you know, one of those franchise players that's, that is in Carolina for years to come. And this is going to be one of the better picks in the draft, I believe. Yeah, and, and uh, I have to agree with you there. Um, Carolina desperately needs uh, needs these defensive linemen. Uh, at least I, that's what I think their biggest need is in this draft, uh, or at least this point. Um, so I'm going to have to go with Derek Brown as well. Um, you know, and like you said, he's the second best defensive lineman in this draft, right behind Chase Young. Um, and, and so, yeah, it is chalk, but sometimes chalk works. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and not spend too much time on this pick. I'm going to go and move on to the Cardinals with the eighth pick. And with uh, with the eighth pick in the draft, I've still got Tristan Wirfs on my board, but I have him going to the Cardinals uh, with this number eight pick. The Cardinals do need a lot on this team. Obviously, they just picked up DeAndre Hopkins. Um, and they, and they really, I mean, God, they got bailed out by the Texans earlier this offseason uh, with that trade uh, for David Johnson. Um, so now they've got Kyler Murray in their backfield. They've got DeAndre Hopkins running routes. And who do they need at this point? They need no lineman. They need a tackle who can block. And this draft, they got so lucky. This draft is so heavy with offensive tackles and great ones at that. Um, and he's going to be a great protector for Kyler Murray. You know, Kyler Murray can – uh, you know, we all we all see what he's made of. We all watched the, or at least I hope that we all watched uh, last year's season, um, and we see what the Cardinals are made of. We see what Kyler Murray can really do on a pro level, and it looks pretty good. And I think it would look a lot better if he wasn't being chased around the backfield. So I, I think that Tristan Wirfs would fit very well in Arizona. Yeah, if worse, I had worse going here in my first mock draft, but in this one, worse comes off the board early. I have the Cardinals going with Andrew Thomas. Offensive tackle out of Georgia. I think he's the next best offensive tackle in the draft. He was, I, I, I was a little iffy on him, but I think a lot of teams think very highly of him. He led a very, very talented Georgia team to the Sugar Bowl. He protected Jake Fromm. I don't know if y'all watched a lot of Georgia games. Jake Fromm was not on the ground a lot. I think Andrew Thomas has a big, big upside. The Cardinals are looking for anybody with a pulse to join that offensive line because Kyler Murray was the most sacked quarterback last year in the league and the Cardinals need an offensive tackle more than anything. So I'm going with Andrew Thomas here and, you know, moving on to pick nine Jaguars. Uh, a lot of people are torn about this pick. I think this is a pick that can go either way, but right now I don't know about you. I'm going to go shockingly with CJ Henderson, cornerback out of Florida. Um, I know a lot of people weren't expecting this per se, but the Jaguars' top need is a DB. Um, if you remember, they did not have Jalen Ramsey anymore. They they It looks like they're going to stick with Gardner Minshew at quarterback. Some people said 
D line, maybe wide receiver, maybe. But I think CJ Henderson is getting a lot of first round of uh, top 10 looks. A lot of people say he could be the best defensive player in the draft. I think the Jaguars jump at the chance to have Henderson at him. He's going to be a lockdown corner for years to come. And the Jaguars solve a big hole at cornerback with CJ Henderson here at number nine. Yeah. Um, and the Jags are definitely an interesting case uh, just because they're a team, you know, we've mentioned the Redskins, we've mentioned, uh, I mean, several others, even to this point so far, but the Jags are really a team that need a player at almost every single position. Um, and this was made abundantly clear when I was doing my mock, when I was doing my research for this mock draft, looking at other mock drafts, et cetera. Um, and every single one of them differs on this pick. I don't think I saw two that were the same. Um, so I'm going to go with Jedrick Wills, you know, Jacksonville, they do need those defensive players, but I really think they need an O-lineman, uh, to protect Gardner Minshew because it looks like that's who they're going to stick with, at least for right now. Um, uh, I don't know, you know, Jedrick Wills is a great offensive lineman. Uh, I, I had him very high on my, uh, top lineman in this draft class. I have him going above Andrew Thomas in this draft, just because I think that the, I think the Jacksonville will see him as, uh, that valuable and, and you know while they do need these defensive players uh, Jacksonville also has another pick at number 20 in this draft so I think that they may wait a little while uh, for that and so to move on to my next pick uh, with Cleveland at number 10 um, you know Andrew Thomas didn't stay on the board for too long I've got him going to Cleveland uh, you know I think that Cleveland really needs an offensive lineman especially an offensive tackle I think that's their I think that's their top need right now you know, if you watched a single Browns game this past season, what did you see? You saw Baker Mayfield being chased around the backfield. You know, I think that I think that Cleveland really has the talent, especially on offense, so they need to get things done. Um, you know, they have two of the best receivers in the league. They have Baker Mayfield. Um, you know, they, they have plenty of awesome offensive talent, but they just don't have an offensive line. So I think they really start to put it together with this draft, and they uh, take Andrew Thomas off the board at number 10. Yeah, I'm going to stick with you here. I, th- I think it's going to be a tackle. Andrew Thomas is not on my board. They're going to go with Jedrick Willis out of Alabama, at offensive tackle, in my opinion. I think arguably Willis is the best offensive lineman of the draft. And But, you know, I just want to preface this pick with this. The Browns are so unpredictable. It is not recommended that I, we even predict this pick. But I think it's a safe bet to go offensive line. I think Baker Mayfield needs some stability somewhere and whether that be I think offensive line might be his best bet because he definitely isn't going to have it at wide receiver with Odell Beckham and Jarvis Landry and all the talent they surrounded him with that he can't decide who to get the ball to let's just protect protect him until he can decide what to do with the ball in, in important moments and I think the Browns I mean Brandon, I mean, could you think of another hole I mean they're stacked at D-line they're stacked at running back they're stacked at wide receiver I mean, they have some good linebackers. Secondary, they've drafted the past two drafts. So, I mean, I don't see another position they could really go. Maybe inside linebacker, but I don't have a inside linebacker rated inside the top 20 in my big board. So I think offensive tackle is the safest bet here. But this next pick, also chalk, in my opinion. The Jets need a wide receiver, guys. Please, someone find you know someone to catch the ball for the Jets. Sam Darnold needs some help. Robbie Anderson left. I think the Jets take the top wide receiver in the draft, and that's Jerry Judy out of Alabama. We've talked about Judy's route running, his physicality. Just, I think Jerry Judy is a future Hall of Fame wide receiver, and for the Jets to get him in 11 is an absolute steal here. Yeah, I agree with you. I think the Jets go with Jerry Judy here. Um, the first wide receiver off my board and a very heavy wide receiver class. Uh, probably one of the best ones we've seen, at least in recent history. Um, you know, there's just so many talented wide receivers in this board uh, this year. Anyway, so I'm not going to spend too much time here. I think that the New York Jets take the best wide receiver in the draft. Um, and with my next pick, uh, Las Vegas, that's right. The Las Vegas Raiders uh, take a wide receiver as well. And I'm going to go ahead and ask everybody to sit down real quick and hear my reasoning on this one. I think the Raiders take Henry Ruggs at number 12. And look, I know it, it, it's shocking. Why would Henry Ruggs go ahead of C.D. Lamb? Everyone knows how high I've been on C.D. Lamb. Some people even have C.D. Lamb being taken over Jerry Judy in this draft. That's fine. But remember, this is the Raiders. This is the Raiders, Zach. The team that just picked up Marcus Mariota, 
the team that traded Khalil Mack two seasons ago. Nothing really about them makes a lot of sense, and I could see them being like, you know what, Henry Ruggs is really fast. Let's get him. Uh, that's fair enough. I mean, I'm not. There's no surprise here. I have C.D. Lamb going to the Raiders. Do I think he should go to the Raiders? I like Ruggs more than Lamb, but I think the Raiders are going to go with the top pick. You know, the top wide receiver on most experts' big boards, and C.D. Lamb's going to supposedly in John Gruden's eyes be a game changer for that offense. I mean, when Hunter Renfro is one of your wide receivers, you might need to get a little bit of an upgrade. Antonio Brown didn't work out. That's that's on a few people's fault, but I think Lamb fits the offensive scheme and he'll be a day one starter in the in the Raiders offense. But your guy makes it at 13, Brandon. I have rugs going to the 49ers at 13. Secondary is a option here, but with a late round pick, I think they have pick 31 as well. I think they wait. Defensive back is a lot more stacked than, you know, wide receiver. It's, they're both stacked, but I think wide receivers can be more popular throughout this draft when you have teams like the Broncos coming up, the Falcons, the, you know, the Jaguars. I mean, there's a lot of teams that need wide receivers. Henry Ruggs is going to go to the 49ers. Jimmy G needs a deep threat, especially after Emmanuel Sanders heads to New Orleans. So I think the 49ers clear up their wide receiver room. They get Henry Ruggs, an explosive downfield threat for Jimmy G. And I think he's going to fit perfectly in Kyle Shanahan's system. Yeah, you know, I agree with you um, in that they are going to take a wide receiver here. They need somebody to uh, to replace Emmanuel Sanders, essentially. You know, he, he was he was a big part of this offense last season. Uh, he's a big part of the reason that they made it uh, to the Super Bowl. You know, they do have, um, you know, they do have a lot of uh, yeah, a lot of people who can catch the ball out there. You know, they have their uh, they have they have their tight end. Um, I'm, I'm blanking on his name right now. I know it's it's Jor Greg. Uh, George Kittle, yeah. George Kittle, George man. Kittle. That's it. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of Gregs in the tight end world. Um, you can't hold that against me. So, but I've got uh, I, I've got San Francisco taking CD Lamb here. Um, he's still on my board, you know. And and realistically, I see them taking Henry Ruggs, and I see Las Vegas taking CD Lamb. But I don't know. Las Vegas is a little bit ridiculous, and CD Lamb's still on the board here. And how can San Francisco really pass that up when they need this uh, wide receivers uh, position so badly? So let's go and move on to Tampa Bay, a team who has been just on the headlines um, in the NFL for about a month now. You know, they picked up Tom Brady uh, from from free agency. They ended up trading for Rob Gronkowski. Uh, that was just that was on Tuesday. And so now what does this team really need? You know, they, they're going to need an offensive line to protect Tom Brady. Um, you know, there's a couple other needs here, but I think that they're going to pick up a tackle, especially since there are so many. Uh, quality tackles in this draft. I think they go with Mecky Becton out of Louisville. Um, just maybe the biggest offensive lineman we've ever seen. You know, he's like six foot eight. He's like 340 pounds. And he is, he runs like a four, six, who knows how, but um, anyway, uh, yeah, I, I think they have to pick Mecky Becton here. I don't really think there's another option for them. No, there's not. I have Becton going here too. In my original mock draft, I actually had Becton as the first offensive tackle off the board. And I think the failed drug test at the combine is going to cause him to drop. And I think the Buccaneers are going to take a risk on him because he has a huge upside. And if you just signed a 40-something-year-old Tom Brady, why wouldn't you want to make sure he's healthy? Becton fills an immediate role. He's an immediate starter. And this causes the Buccaneers to have almost zero needs. Um, and also I, I labeled this as a potential, um, a potential trade here. I think a team like hear me out. I think a team like the Vikings, the Patriots, the saints, someone who might have a quarterback need moving forward with their old quarterback or no quarterback, just, uh, Herbert and love are both still on my board here at 14 and the Buccaneers don't have a lot of holes. So they trade back and get one or two more picks. They can fill those few, those few holes they have with quality talent in the first late first, early second round. Um, but I think the Buccaneers, if they stick with it, will go Becton here to protect Brady. Um, next at 15, we got the Denver Broncos. Um, some people say they might need a quarterback. I think they really like drew Locke. And I really, really like Drew Locke, too. 
So I think they're going to go wide receiver. They don't have a lot of help on the outside. And my next top wide receiver that's available is Justin Jefferson out of LSU. And I think he becomes a day one starter for, you know, Locke. And I think he becomes the top target. I think Justin Jefferson in the Broncos offense has a real, real chance to make a run at offensive rookie of the year. I think Justin Jefferson is has a chance to be the probably second best wide receiver in this class behind Jerry Judy. I'm really high on Jefferson. I think the Broncos f- will find real value here at 15, and I'm going to stick with Jefferson going to the Broncos. Yeah, yeah I think that's a great pick. Um, you know, I don't actually have them taking a wide receiver here. I understand that's a big need for the Broncos right now. Um, but there was just a name that kept popping up in my head every single time I saw the Broncos and every single time that I wanted to think about the Broncos trying to rebuild this defense that they had uh, in Super Bowl 50. Um or forty or whatever Super Bowl it was, uh, you know, I'm 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 out here lost. But um, it, it was it was fifty. It was fifty when they beat the Panthers. Yeah, that's right. Fifty. They're trying to rebuild this defense, and so I think that there's a player that has really dropped down. He is a very talented player, um, one that I got the witness play. Uh, I think they take Javon Kinlaw. Uh, I think they try to fill in a spot at defensive tackle. Um, I understand that may not be one of their most dire needs at this moment, but I do think that he could uh, work very well in this Dimner defense. Um, moving forward, I like, I like, I'm going to go I ahead. like that pick. I really, really like that pick yeah. there. I, if you play, if you pair Kinlaw up with uh, Von Miller, that could be – and well, who was it, Bradley Chubb on the other side, that defensive line is going to be outrageously good next year. Right, and what do we see out of the NFL? You know, defenses truly do win championships in the NFL. Um, and so that's – you know, I, I think that if, if Denver is smart, you know, they do need a wide receiver, they do need O-linemen. Uh, so on and so forth. I think they build up this defensive line and just make it and basically basically a big brick wall. Um, anyway, so let's go and move forward to Atlanta at number 16. Um, I have Atlanta uh, going toward a player that Zach's already taken off his board. Um, like he said, one of the best defensive players in this draft. I've got them taking C.J. Henderson here. Uh, I think Atlanta has a pretty big need at, at defensive back right now, and they need someone to fill that. And like Zach said, you know, it, a lot of experts, a lot of uh, scouts believe that C.J. Henderson is the best uh, cornerback in this draft. And so why not take him here? You know, and, and this Atlanta defense is, is going to be continuing is going to continue to be built up and they're going to continue to uh, get scarier and scarier. And that's what exactly what they're going to need competing in the, in the NFC South this upcoming season. Yeah, the Falcons is, is a complicated one for me because they really need defensive help at all three levels of the defense. They could use a defensive lineman. They can use an outside linebacker. They could use some cornerbacks, some safeties. They have needs almost everywhere on this team, in my opinion. But like Brandon said, there's a guy who fell, and I think he deserves a top 10 pick. He just didn't fit in anywhere, and that's Javon Kinlaw. I think the Falcons take a chance. They get a defensive tackle, uh, you know, get – uh, they have some old defensive linemen. Let me just put it like that. I don't want to call anyone out. I don't want to be mean. This is just a mock draft episode. They have some old defensive linemen. They don't have a star on that defensive line, in my opinion. And I think Javon Kinlaw can be a multi-year starter. I think he has just as much potential as Derek Brown. Uh, in my original mock draft, I had Kinlaw going in the top 10. I had them going ninth to the Jaguars. I think the Jaguars had some needs that they really needed to address. And so I think I think the Falcons realize that and they snatched Kinlaw up up at number 16. But moving on to another team that doesn't have a, a lot of holes, in my opinion, that's the Cowboys. Uh, safety defensive line are the two that really kind of stick out to me. Um, but I also can see the Cowboys who don't have a lot of holes trade it, getting you know, trying to trade back and get some extra picks. Look for the Patriots here. Herbert and Love are still on the board at 17. The Dolphins are coming up at 18. They might try to jump in front of their division rivals and scoop up whatever quarterback they choose. Um, And I think it's a great idea for the Patriots to trade up here. But if the Cowboys stick here, I have an unconventional pick. Some people might be taking a back. We've heard a lot of bad things about this player, but I think, it's rumors released by teams mid round that want this player to fall to them. And that's safety Grant Delpit out of LSU. I think the Cowboys 
snatched Del Pitt off at 17. The Cowboys need back in help. Del Pitt was a potential top five pick before his last season. And I think to me, he has the highest upside of almost any defensive player in the draft. He's going to get drafted at 17. This is going to be similar to Derwin James, who also dropped in the draft, but made the Pro Bowl in his rookie season for the Chargers. I think the Cowboys find their safety of the future, and the Cowboys make a strong run for the Super Bowl this next year with the added defensive help. You know what, Zach? I, you know, I, I I do like that pick. Um, and I do think that the Cowboys are going to end up with an LSU player uh, in this first round pick as long as they keep it. You know, I, you know, I do think that trading this pick is entirely possible to the Patriots. Maybe not. You know, it's just not really what Bill Belichick's known for. He doesn't typically like to trade up when he can probably get something at a at a better value later on down the line. Um, but, yeah, you know, like you said, the Cowboys have uh, not very many holes. Uh, the holes they do have are, you know, they, they need somebody on that defensive end. They need an edge rusher. Um, and so who I have going to the Cowboys is going to be Clavon Chason out of LSU. Um, he's a linebacker, uh, I know. But what did we see out of him this past season? We saw him terrorizing SEC backfields all year long. He can line up there on the edge and he can rush like a defensive lineman. But he is a linebacker. You know, he, he can play that position as well. Um, I think that they really just have a great dual player here. And Clavon Chase on and 17 might be a little high for him, but I think it's entirely possible. Um, let's go and move on to Miami at number 18. They traded uh, obviously earlier this past season uh, with Pittsburgh. And so now they have the number 18 pick in this draft. And Miami is a team, you know, we mentioned earlier with a lot of holes. You know, I think they already filled that quarterback hole in my draft. Obviously, you know, I, I made this, I made this draft before I knew about the news that they were going to go with an O lineman. Um, super high for whatever reason. Um, I don't even have them taking an O-lineman here just because a lot of the really good offensive tackles are already off my board at this point. So I had them taking Justin Herbert early on. Um, and so now I think another need they, another thing they need is a safety. You know, they traded away their safety this past season for this pick, <laughs> really. And so I think they end up with another safety out of the University of Alabama. I think they go with Xavier McKinney here at number 18. Um, you know, we saw what he could do. We saw him lose his head. That's probably what Zach's going to point to here in just a second. But, uh, yeah, I, I do think that Xavier McKinney is a quality player. Do I think that he is quality compared to what they gave up for this pick? Not even a little bit. But they had to do something. They had to, they had to start the rebuild somewhere. And I think Xavier McKinney is going to fit pretty well in this backfield. I like I like the pick. I'm not going to lie to you. I I do. Um, as you know, ever all our listeners know, I had them go in O line early because I think they wanted to see who fell to them. They get their choice of J- Herbert or Love, and I think they're going to go with Herbert here at 18. I think Herbert could be, like I said, could be a potential trade person up in the draft with the Patriots or someone like that. But if Herbert falls to 18, the Dolphins aren't missing their second chance at Herbert. I think he was their first pick anyway so uh, a, a lot of rumors said they like Tua I think that was to try to get a team to trade up for him but you know Tua's injury prone the Dolphins have one of the worst offensive lines in the league so why would you want to you waste a first round pick on a quarterback who might not make it through the season with your offensive line and the cancellation of all Tua's workouts because of the COVID outbreak only added to this problem I think Flores comes from a Bill Belichick coaching tree, and Herbert's a perfect quarterback to fit that system. He's big. He has a big arm. He's athletic enough to make some plays out of the pocket. Herbert's going to fit this system and what they want to do. And even if you don't want to start him this year, Ron Fitzpatrick is, has one more year. And who better to learn from than Ron Fitzpatrick, the Harvard grad who has been in the NFL for, it seems, like 50 years. So I'm going to take have the Dolphins taking Herbert here. And then we move to another team with another pick in the first round the Raiders um you know earlier I had them going with CD Lamb so knocked out one of their needs linebacker is a somewhat need I think it's a secret need for them an under the radar need and so I think they're going to go with Kenneth Murray linebacker out of Oklahoma and you know that might be an unconventional pick to some people but Kenneth Murray is an elite linebacker I think Excellent ball skills. He's a leader, and he really shined on an Oklahoma defense that sometimes struggled, but he was never the reason that that 
defense struggled. I think John Gruden is going to love this kid's mentality. I think John Gruden pictures him playing similar to how his Buccaneers defenses did back when they went to the Super Bowl. He's going to be ultra athletic linebacker that's going to be a multi-year starter, which is ex- excellent value at number 19 here for the Raiders. Yeah, yeah, I can definitely see that. Um, with my pick for Las Vegas here and their second pick in the first round, um, you know, I looked at a couple of their needs. They needed a wide receiver. I have them taking Henry Ruggs early in this draft. Um, at this pick, you know, I think they need a lot of help in their defensive backfield. Um, and so I'm going to go with the cornerback here. I think that Las Vegas ends up taking AJ Terrell um, out of Clemson. You know, AJ Terrell's really shown us what he can do um, at Clemson. You know, he's played both sides of the ball. Um, but I, I, I think he's a pretty talented cornerback, and I think that I think that the Raiders see some talent in him, um, and they need to beef up their defense at this point. So uh, that's that's my pick. I don't have really too much else to say about him. Um, moving on to Jacksonville with number twenty. This is the third team with a second pick in the first round. Um, Jacksonville has a lot of needs, like I mentioned earlier. You know, they have needs at almost every single position. Um, you know, they they they've they've even even a position like running back where we thought they might have been solid, it looks like they're going to trade Leonard Fournette, and you know they may that trade may come on draft day. We don't really know, um, but running back opens up, and you know Leonard Fournette was a big target out of the backfield um, for Gardner Minshew for Nick Foles this past season, and so I think that they're going to need uh, someone to pass the ball off to, and so I think they go with a wide receiver here. Uh, I think they end up taking Justin Jefferson. You know he's still on my board here at this point in the draft, and I think that he would be a pretty good fit in Jacksonville. Um, you know, would I like to see him with a better quarterback, a quarterback that's better than Gardner Minshew? Yeah, but Gardner Minshew can really air this ball out. You know, he was part of that Mike Leach system in Washington State, um, that air raid system, and I think that Justin Jefferson's a player that can get down the field and and make these big catches. Uh, so I think he would work pretty well in Jacksonville, and so that's why I have him going number 20 in my draft. I, I like that pick. Uh, I do. And so this is going to be something that I think a lot of people are going to have a problem with. And just hear me out real quick, please. Uh, don't roast me just yet. I have Jaguars going cornerback again with their second first okay. round pick. I have them going with Trayvon Diggs out of Alabama at cornerback. And the reason is I think they're that weak in the secondary guys. I think they have that big of a hole that drafting two young cornerbacks could really solidify this defense because they have the linebackers. They do need the interior defensive linemen, but at pick 20, I don't see a lot of value at some of these interior defensive linemen at this point. So I think they're going to just sure up their secondary even more. I think Trayvon Diggs has the ability to play some safety. If you work with them, I think they might play around and move him to safety. And I think that could be an opportunity Jacksonville seems to really like SEC players. They really like Alabama players. They drafted Ronnie Harrison out of Alabama. They drafted Leonard Fournette out of LSU. I think Trayvon Diggs is the pick here. They're going to sure up their defense with two SEC cornerbacks that really shined at their respective schools. And I think Trayvon Diggs and Henderson are going to make this Jacksonville secondary very, very dangerous. Um, yeah. And moving to the Eagles. Uh, you know, this pick was also kind of hard. The Eagles can go, I think, a lot of different ways. And for here, I think there was a person who kind of dra- dropped a little bit further than most people expect. I don't think they can pass on them. And that's uh, Caleb Von Chasen out of uh, LSU, the, out- the edge slash outside linebacker, depending on where they want to put them. I think the Eagles would utilize him more as an outside linebacker, but they could drop him down into an edge rusher if needed. And I think Chaseon... If- solves a huge knee because I don't think there's a lot of holes for the Eagles, you know, other places they might go, I would say wide receiver here, but for, for my own personal, you know, opinion, I don't think the wide receiver class is as deep in this late first round as some people do. And I think the Eagles are just going to sure up that defense and get a receiver, maybe someone like KJ Hamler late in the second, early third, something like that. And I think the Eagles you know, sure up that front seven because the Eagles defense did struggle last year toward the end of the season. You know, I, I, I really like that explanation from you, Zach. Uh, it makes a lot of sense. And so that's I, – I, I've done something very similar to you. Um, I don't have the Eagles taking a uh, 
I don't have them taking wide receiver here either, although that may be their biggest need at this point in time. I think that if they wait to the second round, if they wait later on in this draft, they're going to be able to pick up one of these wide receivers that drop a little bit. Um, you know, like I, like I mentioned earlier, there are so many wide receivers in this class. Uh, I mean, starting with Lamb, Judy, Ruggs. Then, I mean, let's mention players like Lamiska Chenault, T. Higgins, uh, K.J. Hamler, Brandon Ayuk, Michael Pittman even. Uh, I mean, there's just so many wide receivers out there, and they're going to be, be able to pick up one later on. And so that's why I have the Eagles uh, firming up their defense as well. But I have them taking um, Kenneth Murray out of Oklahoma. Yeah, I know that you had him going a little bit earlier in this draft, but I really, you know, I, I believe that you're right when you say they need to firm up this front seven on their defense. And I think that Kenneth Murray is a player that can get that done. You know, he has a lot of depth in this defense. Um, and, and he's a real playmaker, as he showed us in the Big 12. You know, that those are a lot of high-powered offenses in the Big 12. And he was a defensive player that shined. And that's not something you see very often out of the Big, out of the Big 12. So I think that Kenneth Murray is a real value pick here. I, I honestly think he's a top 20 player in this draft that ended up falling just slightly out of the top 20. Um, so moving forward uh, with Minnesota uh, at number 22, yeah, this is a pick they received from Buffalo in that Stephon Diggs trade um, earlier this season or this off season. Um, so that leaves Minnesota with a little bit of a gap, you know, ironically enough, I think at wide receiver, you know, they, they, they obviously need a defense back as well. And I think, you know, they traded knowing they would need that, but now they need a wide receiver. You know, I guess they still have, um, shoot. I keep bringing on Adam Thielen. Adam Thielen. Adam Thielen. We're still a college football, yeah, we're, we're, a college football p- podcast, uh, regardless of what you may have uh, heard from us over the past like month or two. Um, and they do have Adam Thielen. But I think that they're going to need another wide receiver. And so that's why I think that they go with Brandon Ayuk here um, out of Arizona State. Uh, He's a very talented wide receiver, too. Um, Do I think that he deserves to go this high? Not necessarily. But I definitely see Minnesota going on a limb here, taking Brandon Ayuk. I've heard talks within, you know, I don't want to be like, hey, I'm an insider. I'm not. But I have heard talks saying that Minnesota is leaning toward taking a wide receiver at this point. And I think Brandon Ayuk's a pretty good pick. Uh, I, I think that's a player they're really leaning toward at this point. Wow, what are the odds? I'll have that exact same pick here at 22 for the Vikings. Brandon Ayuk, yeah. I think, is the next best wide receiver, probably a less stretched than some of the other wide receivers that could be taken here. I think the Vikings have that next pick at 25 to shore up the defensive backs. I think this wide receivers, you know, run that we saw early in the first round is going to force the Vikings hand here. Do you think I would do, do I think they would want to draft a wide receiver here? Probably not, but I think they're going to have to. Brandon Ayuk fits what they need. They have Adam Thielen, a shifty, you know, I guess wide receiver one. So why not get a long ragey wide receiver two and Brandon Ayuk? So I think that's how they go here. Next, the Patriots. Who knows what Bill Belichick is going to do if they even have this pick moving forward. If they do, what, what, Brandon? They can go tight end now that they traded Gronk. They could go offensive line because of the injuries. They could go quarterback because Brady left. They could go defensive back because they need some help on the back end. They should go linebacker because they lost Kyle Van Noy. They could go defensive end because they lost – I forgot his – his name, but they lost some defensive linemen in free agency. I mean, Patriots have holes everywhere, guys. But the one player out of the entire draft that screams the Patriots is Zach Bond out of out of Wisconsin. I think, you know, like you said, Brandon, Belichick doesn't reach on players. And there's not I don't think Jordan loves a first round talent. And I don't think there's a lot of Wide receivers that deserve a high pick. There's not a lot of secondary defenders that deserve a super high pick. I think Zach Braun is he's tough. He's disciplined. He does his job and he's physical. And I think those are all qualities that Bill Belichick loves in a linebacker. And I think Braun feels an immediate need that Kyle Van Noy left when he went to Miami this offseason. And Braun's going to be the pick here at 23 if the Patriots still have it. Yeah, uh, you know, and that was a player that I played around with here at this position. I didn't end up taking him. Um, you know, New England is a team that has a lot of holes at this point, like you mentioned. Uh, strangely enough, you know, who would have thought? Um, but yeah, they, they really do. Um, and, and so where do they start? You know, you mentioned quarterback. Uh, 
and I'll be honest with you, I really, you know, as much as you like to underplay this, I really think that Jared Stidham's name carries a lot more weight in New England uh, than you think it does. Um, and more than a lot of people think it does. You know, I, I really think, you know, he may not end up being the starter day one here uh, when the season starts, but he's going to be right there behind Brian Hoyer. And he is probably going to end up being their starter at some point. You know, will will the Patriots bring in another quarterback later on the draft? You know, that's still up in the air. That's undecided. Uh, we're only here to draft the first round. But uh, I do think that New England has a lot more gaps in their defense than in their offense somehow. And so, yeah, you know, you mentioned that they may need a defensive lineman. I think they end up going with the defensive end with this pick. And I think they go with uh, A.J. Uh, Epineza. Um, you know, uh, yeah, this is a player that I also got to watch a lot uh, this past season, a player that I think is very talented um, and, and one that's going to fill a pretty big hole uh, for New England uh, at in this time at Iowa. Uh, I mean, what did we see out of him? I, I believe a couple of weeks ago we, we spoke on him a little bit. Um, he's a player that can break into that backfield. He's a player that can disrupt plays. And I think that uh, – that he'll play a very important uh, position in New England's offense. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and move forward with my next pick. Uh, New Orleans has this pick, and good God, does New Orleans need some help somewhere? Um, <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I may just, I may be just saying that because I'm a Saints fan. Uh, but I mean, New Orleans needs a linebacker, and New New Orleans needs a quarterback. Um, they need someone to replace Drew Brees, if, whether they want to believe that or not. It's not going to be Taysom Hill. Um, and on my draft board at this point, you know, Jordan Love falls here. I don't think the Saints take him. I, I really don't. I think that Sean Payton, for whatever reason, has this strange love with Taysom Hill. And they're going to wait until later on in this draft to get a quarterback. You know, who knows who it's going to be, uh, whoever falls far enough for them to pick up. I wouldn't be mad if it was Anthony Gordon. You know, maybe get me on the line with the Saints front office right now. But uh, I think the Saints end up taking a linebacker here. And who just – just luckily enough falls to New Orleans in in my mock draft and in a lot of other mock drafts other than Patrick Queen from LSU. Just one of the most explosive linebackers in the country this past season uh, over his career. You know, he's a guy who, I mean, really just covers the entire field. You know, he can drop back into coverage if he needs to, and he can break into backfields when he needs to. So I, I think that he's a very talented player, and I think that New Orleans – might have this in the works, you know. They New Orleans does like to take uh, uh, people. From, they like to take funny, funnily enough, uh, people who are from Louisiana a lot, and so I, I can see Patrick Queen landing in New Orleans. Yeah, I'm real upset. I, I'm, I'm gonna need you to send me back my mock draft that you stole because I also have Patrick Queen going here. I had him. I had him going in my first mock draft. Um, you know, the Saints are proud to make a Super Bowl run. They have. have their defense is, I think, what's going to hold them back here. Some pe- some experts are saying wide receiver here, but that makes no sense after the addition of Emmanuel Sanders. I mean, there's only one ball, and we saw how an overload of stars really affected the Cleveland Browns this past year. So I don't think they go that way. Why not get a star linebacker that is a game changer and was just in the state and just got a national championship for the state of Louisiana? I think Queen will be an immediate contributor. And I think it can only improve a really, really good defense already. I think the secondary is decent, but I really think Patrick Queen can play a role in the run game and the passing game. And I think he fills an immediate need for the Saints. And I mean, it seems like Brandon really likes this pick as well. So as a Saints fan, I'm glad I can, you know, appease the masses here with this pick. And, right. you know, mo- moving to pick 25, we're back. And <laughs> we're back in Minneapolis with the with the Vikings. And, uh, you know, I went wide receiver first. They need a defensive back, um, a, you know, a highly rated defensive back that's still on the board uh, is Noah Ibn- Igbenogany from Auburn, the cornerback. He was recruited as a wide receiver, got switched to cornerback, made – I, he only allowed, I believe it was three touchdowns on him his whole career at Auburn, Brandon. Um, Kuyper has him as his second rated cornerback in this draft. I have him going behind Trayvon Diggs. As I think the saving connection is going to really help Diggs out. And I think, I think Noah goes here to the Vikings. They need a defensive back. And 
why not get one that specializes in stopping uh, passing touchdowns? So I'm going to go with uh, uh, with Noah here from Auburn in uh, the second Auburn player taken in the first round. Yeah, so Minnesota, uh, you know, they obviously have this need at cornerback and defensive back. And so that's exactly what I did. Uh, just this uh, past or this offseason, they already traded Stephon Diggs to Buffalo. That's how they got their 22nd pick. I think with their 25th pick and he's still on my board, I'm going with Trayvon Diggs. You know, they trade a Diggs and they get a Diggs. Uh, they always need one of those in in Minneapolis, apparently, um, as much as I hate that. Um, yeah, I, you know, I, I think he works really well in this backfield. I think that Trayvon Diggs is one of the most talented quarterbacks in this draft. And, and so I think that's why Minnesota goes with him. And Zach, pick number 26 goes to Miami uh, from Houston. And – He's still on my board, and I almost didn't even have him in my draft. But tell me if you like this pick for your favorite team. I think Miami goes with a need. Uh, I think they I think they could honestly go with Grant Delpit here. Uh, I know they already picked up Xavier McKinney already in my mock draft. I think why not double down on safeties? You know, there, there are two safety positions. Um, I think that with Xavier McKinney and Grant Delpit in their defensive backfield, this defense turns from – okay, whatever, to, oh, my God, we can't pass on them, period. I, I like it. I mean, they got Xavier Howard and, and Byron Jones in free agency to be the cornerback. So secondary would be loaded. I uh, don't know if I would like two safeties, but if I could have McKinney or or Delpit, I would rather have Delpit. But if we have both, maybe we trade somebody. Not really sure. Eric Rose still there. Um, I also believe Bobby McCain's still there. So I think someone's going to have to go. But if you can use one of them as capital to get a second or third round pick, I think it only helps with all the holes this team has. Um, you had them going earlier. I have Xavier McKinney being taken here at 26 for the Dolphins. Um, I don't think they needed to use that 18th pick on him. Uh, I think O-line and quarterback are going to be those first two picks. Whichever way they go, those are going to be the two positions. I also maybe, just maybe, can see running back here. But since running back's so loaded and there's not a lot of running backs projected in the first round, I think the Dolphins hold off. They do have two second-round picks and multiple third-round picks. The Dolphins have the most picks in the draft. Why not wait and try to get a steal later in the draft? I think they go Xavier McKinney. Like you said earlier, I think they're going to go with an Alabama safety to replace an Alabama safety, even though Fitzpatrick is out of McKinney's league. F- Fitzpatrick was the one I would want, but it is what it is. They had to do what they had to do. But next we got the Seahawks, another team with not a lot of holes. And I was really torn here in my original mock draft. I had them go in safety with Winfield Jr. out of Minnesota. I don't think they go that way now. I think they're going to look at defensive line. Their top need is an edge rusher. And I think they go Yader Gross uh, Matos out of Penn State, the edge rusher. I think he is probably, in my opinion, the second best, the second best edge rusher in the draft. I think he has some of the biggest upside about D Lyman. And I think this makes the Seahawks defense added on with J- um, with Clowney that they got this past season. I think the Seahawks are going to have one of the best defensive lines in the, in the country. Yeah. I, and you know what? You already mentioned me stealing your mock draft. I'm going to need you to hand my mock draft back because I also have Seattle taking getter. Uh, Rose Matos here at number 27. Uh, like you said, they have this need at edge and with, with uh, Clowney here in Seattle, you know, he really adds on to the defensive line and they turn into more of an unstoppable force. Uh, I won't speak on it too much more because you already did. And I'm going to go ahead and move on to Baltimore at number 28. Um, Zach, this, this was a tough one for me just because this Baltimore team is loaded, right? You know, yes, everywhere. Right. And, and so they really do need a linebacker. Um, I think that one ends up falling to them at a later pick. Uh, there's a couple other positions that they could add on at, but I, I think that most of them end up falling. I think they go ahead and go aggressive here and go after a running back. The only running back I have in my first round. Um, and let me tell you why. Because Baltimore this past season ran the ball more than any other team in the league. And yes, that's because they have Lamar Jackson. But could you imagine Lamar Jackson and DeAndre Swift out of Georgia in the same backfield next, next this upcoming season? I think this offense goes from great to scary. Uh, I think that Swift is honestly a top 20 player in this draft. You know, a lot of people have no running backs in the first round. 
Um, and that's just because, you know, the running back position is so undervalued at this point. Um, and, and running backs, a position that a player is going to be able to play for the rookie contract and really not a whole lot longer. You know, we saw Christian McCaffrey sign his extension this offseason, but that's something that is basically unheard of in today's league. Uh, so, yeah, I, you know, I do think that uh, I do think that Swift would just, uh, I mean, add on to the absolute insanity of Baltimore's offense. Um, and, and so I think that's why he is a valuable pick here at number 28. Do you think they trade Mark Ingram then? Yeah, or they would have Mark Ingram sit behind Swift because Ingram is, let's face it, he's getting a little bit older. Uh, I understand he can still he can still run the football. Um, and yeah, and they may end up trading him. But I, I see DeAndre Swift uh, moving into a starting position here in Baltimore if he's drafted. Wow. Uh, I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I did not see that pick coming. Um, I actually went a different way than you. I, I, I looked at the roster. I was looking at the needs that a lot of people laid out, and it seemed like inside linebacker and inside offensive lineman were the two biggest needs that most people identify for the Ravens, and I agree with it. I'm going to go with the, the first interior offensive lineman drafted so far, and that is uh, Cesar Ruiz, the guard slash center out of Michigan. I think, you know, if you're the Ravens, your top priority is pro- protecting Lamar Jackson, the most electric, you know, player you have, the one that's gaining you all the notoriety that just won the MVP. Why not take your first round pick and make sure he's going to be safe? I think Ruiz is probably the best interior uh, offensive lineman in the draft and you pick him up at 28 and you might have a 10 to 15 year starter at you know, at center or guard, whichever you choose. And he allows you to have versatility. Do you want him at left guard, center or right guard? He can put them everywhere. It helps with injuries, even if he doesn't start immediately. I think Ruiz is the pick here for the Ravens. Um, You know, we move to the Titans, another team, not a lot of needs. I mean, they made a run. Quarterback could be an option, but probably not, if you ask me. And I think their top need is in tackle. And I think they're going to go with Josh Jones out of Houston. I think the offensive tackle, you know, rush that we had early in the draft with the Browns and the Dolphins and all these other teams that needed offensive linemen, I think that's going to force the Titans' hand. Josh Jones is the next best offensive offensive tackle, and I think they're going to grab Jones. I think Jones is a first-round talent, and I think this is the first draft in a while where we've seen four to five offensive tackles really have long a potential longevity in the league, and I don't think the Titans are going to waste any time by getting Jones. I mean, why not get another bulldozer for Derek Henry, who really is a bulldozer himself and doesn't need much help. But imagine if you can get Henry, you know, to the secondary every time and he just bulldozes cornerbacks. I mean, the Titans could be very scary. I think Jones feels a need. I think Taylor Luan is getting old and why not go ahead and sure up that offensive line while you can. Yeah, that, that's, that's a solid point. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move on to Tennessee as well. Uh, you know, th- this is a team, like you said, not a lot of holes. They did go on that run this past season. And I think they're going to stick with Tannehill at quarterback. You know, that that's just they, – they leaned on him this past season, and it got them pretty far. Uh, I'd say Den- Derrick Henry really is the one who got them far, but I think they believe that Tannehill is the uh, answer to their prayers at quarterback. Um, so, you know, not a lot of needs here. And this is another uh, pick where – experts had several different players going um and so who i'm going to go with here is going to be antoine winfield uh the safety i I really think the tennessee doesn't really have like a huge need here uh obviously they've got kenny vaccaro uh as the strong safety and they've got kevin byard uh, as the free safety Uh, i think that um uh, winfield can really grow into one of these roles though and i think that moving forward i mean kenny vaccaro how old is he at this point you know, he, he, he's, I wouldn't say he's a veteran, but he's, he's got a good six years under his belt at this point. Uh, I think that he's going to be moving out fairly soon enough. And I think that Anton Winfield is a player who could really fill his shoes. Uh, moving on to pick number 30 with the Packers. And this is going to be maybe my most outrageous pick. And I know a lot of you are thinking, how is that your most outrageous pick? Brandon, you've picked Henry Ruggs for the Raiders at 13. You've picked, uh, you picked DeAndre Swift at 28 for the Ravens, um, and here's how: uh, there, there's a player that's fallen. Um, a lot of a lot of player, a lot of people didn't have him falling this far in their mock drafts. Um, you know, Aaron Rodgers is getting up there 
in age. And we kind of saw the same exact thing happen when Brett Favre was getting a little bit older in Green Bay. Um, Green Bay is a team that at least their front office likes to have a quarterback sitting there waiting. And, you know, there's a quarterback here on the board that a lot of people think might be the most talented, uh, maybe not the most like honed in, in his talents, but he has the most potential talent in this draft. And that's Jordan Love. Uh, a lot of people really do think that. And I think that Green Bay has expressed that. Uh, yeah, there's been talks in their front office that if Jordan Love was to fall this far, they might go ahead and pick him up just because he's a quarterback who could sit behind and learn behind Aaron Rodgers, um, see the way that their offense is run. And honestly, I, you know, and, I, and I've, I'll be the first one to criticize Jordan Love, but I think that if he has time to sit behind a future Hall of Famer like Aaron Rodgers for a few seasons, that he really might turn into something great. And I might have to eat my words. Yeah, I don't agree with you on this one. I think if the Packers get a quarterback, it's going to be someone like Anthony Gordon, late round pick, Jake Fromm, Jacob Eason, someone like that. I I think for me, this pick is obvious what they need. Uh, the Packers need some help at wide receiver. Uh, really, really bad. Devontae Adams can't do it all. And I think the Packers are going to go with T. Higgins out of Clemson right here i think he's the next best wide receiver i think higgins offers a unique skill set that rogers is gonna love i think combining him with Devonte adams can only improve this offense they loaded up on defense last year they don't need a lot of things they could go interior offensive linemen but outside of you know ruiz i don't think anyone deserves a first round pick at you know, interior offensive line. I think a lot of those will come third, fourth round, maybe second, depending on who it is. Maybe someone like Lloyd Cush Cushenberry out of LSU could get an early second round pick, but we'll see. But yeah, I think the Packers go with wide receiver for sure here, whether that be Higgins. It also maybe could be Denzel Mims, but based on what I've been hearing, he's been dropping on a lot of people's boards. So I think if T Higgins is sitting here after dominating at Clemson these past few years, I think Higgins is the pick and they're going to send him up to Wisconsin with Aaron Rodgers. Um, you know, pick 31, we got two picks left guys, the 49ers. So I'm kind of torn here. I, uh, I don't know about you, Brandon. I, th I think this could go a few ways. I mean, they have an early pick. They they clear their wide receiver need out with Ruggs or Lamb, whoever you projected a pick. I had Ruggs on mine. I think they actually go with safety here. A little shocking cornerback could also be a need, but Richard Sherman and these secondary defenders they have aren't getting any younger. And I think Winfield Jr. has huge huge upside and for me i think he's better than the 31st pick in the nfl draft i think he's a top 20 player and i think winfield has real versatility and he has i don't i i, I think he has really really great pro bowl potential but potential hall of fame maybe i don't know that's a stretch sometimes but i think the 49ers need defensive help i mean you look at what happened in the super bowl i mean it, you don't think they could have used someone like Winfield to try to stop Tyreek Hill and Patrick Mahomes and keep that lead? I think the 49ers are going to try to get younger on their defense, younger in the secondary. They've spent first-round picks on their defensive line for, it seems like, the past seven years, and they're going to need some backside help, and I think Winfield feels an immediate need for this team. Right, yeah, and I can definitely see that. I had him going a few picks earlier. Um, you know, and I agree with you. I think I think the 49ers do need a little bit of defensive help here. Um, and while their defensive line is pretty stacked at this point, I think they could stand to take another defensive tackle. Um, and so that's why I have Ross Blaylock, uh, Blacklock out of uh, TCU going at this, uh, at this spot. You know, he, he's, he's a fairly fast uh, defensive tackle. Uh, you know, he, he weighs in at 6'3", 290. Um, I think he can hold his weight against, against NFL offensive linemen, especially if he is on the same defensive line as as bosa so you know we're, we're gonna see this player really develop a lot over this next season if he's drafted by the 49ers um and so that's why i have him going here at 31 and to finish out my mock draft at 32 uh we have kansas city you know the reigning super bowl champions what other need could they possibly have at this point i think they have a few um i think they could stand to fill a cornerback uh, position i think the one of those will fall to them later on um but really i think their needs uh lies at offensive line and so i have a player that zach's already taken off his board um who's fallen on mine a few picks 
and uh, Cesar Ruiz. Um, you know, I, I think that, like Zach said, he is the best interior offensive lineman in this draft. I, I think that he's the only one who deserves a first round pick, you know, all, although it'd be pretty late for me. I, I think that he does deserve a first round pick. And so uh, I, I can see him coming in here, protecting Patrick Mahomes a little bit better um, and helping out this offense and maybe making a second playoff run uh, this season. I, I like the pick. Uh, I, I don't have another offensive lineman who has a lot of value here. I think I don't have a lot of value at cornerback either to replace uh, F- Kendall Fuller, which they lost in free agency. Um, I think a stretch pick could be Christian Fulton, maybe A.J. Terrell out of Clemson, but I don't like either of them as a first-round pick. Um, so I'm going to go with defensive line. They lost Emmanuel um, Oboga. At defensive end, they're still in contract talks with a few of their big defensive end. Chris Jones comes to mind. So I think they're going to make a splash here, go edge rusher, and they're going to get Marlon Davidson out of Auburn. He he can play tackle, defensive end. He could stand them up. It doesn't matter. The versatility is why I'm going with this pick here. Uh, Brandon, you saw him at the Senior Bowl. You really like Marlon. Um, and I think he could fill an immediate need as an edge rusher. I mean, the offense is loaded for the Chiefs. I mean, and I don't see a lot of value at interior offensive line here. So I think loading up that defense and make if that defense gets elite, then it could be over. I mean, could you imagine a defensive line with Chris Jones, Frank Clark, and Marlon Davidson on it? I mean, the pass rush would be outrageous. Marlon Davidson led Auburn and sacks his freshman year as a true freshman. So I think Davidson is high value at 32. And, Brent, I mean, we've seen – some mock drafts have them going even higher, but falling to the Chiefs is a dream come true for them. Yeah, that's true. You know, I, I did like seeing Marlon Davidson uh, before he was injured, or not injured, before he didn't pass his physical at the Senior Bowl. Um, and plus, I've seen him play before that. You know, he, he is a solid force there on the defensive line, and I like that pick from uh, from you, Zach. But that, I mean, that wraps us up, right? Yep, that is it, guys. The first 32 picks are done, at least on the Blue Bloods. Uh, we decided to release this episode the day of the draft, get you guys some draft coverage before. Big announcement coming. Um, guys, tune in with us. Links are going to be up on all social media. We will be live streaming the first round of the NFL draft tonight. Um, we're going to start up six, uh, probably around 6.30. Links will go out on Instagram. Follow us at the underscore blue bloods go up on twitter at the underscore underscore blue bloods facebook at the blue bloods pod i know a lot of you guys already follow us so find us there um you guys will be live on youtube as well just search the blue bloods we're going to be giving live reactions to all the first round picks live coverage of the entire first round of the nfl draft so guys tune in in between picks we'll be giving our takes and you guys can submit questions before after during the draft and we will address all and any questions um if you follow us on social media merch is coming let us know if you guys want any uh t-shirts or anything we're in the works for some bigger things other than just t-shirts but let us know guys other than that keep tuning in subscribe like rate whatever you want to do to the podcast tell your friends family everyone uh but as long as you guys keep tuning in we're going to keep dropping but for right now we out